I mean, travel be damned and Omicron be damned. We're getting you to Dallas. That's my goal today. Awesome. <laughs> so, okay, regarding your background, though, Mark, can I just tell you, I always felt your background was the strongest between the four gents, if you will. And I think, did you give advisement to them or did they see your background? They're like, okay, I got to step up our game. I think I, I, I try not to advise anybody who isn't paying me or who hasn't asked explicitly. And even if they've asked explicitly, I probably don't offer much help unless somebody actually pays me because people don't value stuff enough unless they actually exchange money. And there's a whole bunch of psychology around that. So I'm, I'm mm. pretty strict about that. But I think they saw what was going on and, and they watched some of my videos and thought, yeah, we better do some of that. So well, at least yeah. they well, have taught me that. I will say they did step up their game because I remember in the beginning, I was like, wow, is that like a jail cell? Oh, no. Okay. We're, we're okay. So, all right. So Tracy and Mark, I'm so excited to have you. Are you uh, ready to uh, join the mic is listening? Yes. We are ready. Yes. All right. Let's do this. The mic is listening. The mic is listening. The mic, the mic is listening. 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 Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the mic is listening. Probably knows this is a different background today because I got inspired with today's guest. And I might might make it a new thing where I might go with the theme of my shows and change up my backgrounds. So if you guys are curious why I'm super excited and why I've been talking about this nonstop with all my circle of friends, it is because we've had experiences with individuals either virtually right now or in person where we're just not connecting or you're overly connecting in the context of you probably want to choke someone and you don't know fully why. And, or in my case, in sales, why am I not closing this damn deal? Right. So I think we know intuitively that we get our feelings, you get feelings about a conversation or a person. And it all has to do with body language and your presence and the way you articulate yourself in your communication. Words matter, absolutely. But it's that saying, you know, it's not what you say, it's what, how you make people feel oftentimes. And to me, I think it has a lot to do with how you are, you know, present yourself. So on that note, last few months, I've been harassing this lovely couple for the longest time and they've been gracious enough to join me. So I would like to welcome to the show, Mike is listening to Tracy Thompson and Mark Bo Bowden. Perfect. Perfect. Is that so Hi, hard to pronounce? Tracy, Mark, welcome. You're well, look, thank you for having us. Pronunciation is very, very difficult. We before we were chatting with each other right now, uh, I was having to work out whether your name is Sia or Saya, and oh, so or uh, Saya, or Saya, or anyway, it's Sia. It's Sia, and it's like uh, you know, it's funny is that if I say it, people like at a cocktail party or whatever, no problem. See you later all day long, right? The exactly. second they see it written, my name now becomes Sierra, Sylvia. <laughs> it's like, you just said my name and now you're adding word letters to it. It is, it is funny. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's just our brain uh, just goes straight to what we're familiar with. Is that what the deal is on things I like think that? Sometimes we wonder, cause I do that. I, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about and I'll know someone's name is Pamela or Pam or, you know, I, I, like that type of name that could also be Patricia or Patty. And I'll call them Pam a million times and then I'll look at them and I'll be like, wait a minute, is it Patty? Is it Patricia? Or is it, I just, some names, if you see them, if you see them out of context or you meet them out of context, I think your brain just gets a bit confused. So here's my problem is that I, I'm really very bad at remembering people's names. And I know there's all those techniques out there and, and, and people will be able to send emails and texts to me going, Hey, here's this brilliant mnemonic device. Don't please don't do that. They don't work. I've tried them all. I, I, I have difficulty even with the thing with what objects are called. Anything that has an object that has a you know a thing that has a name, a person that has a name, you know the 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 the, the descriptor of it, possibilities of remembering it are very 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 low. So I'll, I'll look at things and think, what is that called? What is that so, thing called? Yeah, I would call it thing, thingy, 
yeah, yeah. that thing that they're there, them there, and point. And um, the scarier part is, is my family and friends will understand me. So is that really more of a indictment on them or my communication skills or their ability to translate my communication? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my guess is is they 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 have a good prediction system because they know you quite well, and mm -hmm. and they won't understand you all the time, but they understand you enough that you remember all the times they understand you because that's kind of kind of quite positive, and and you let go of all the times they misunderstand you, and they've got, it's a better bet than me or Tracy who know you less or certainly less than your family. Um, you know, our prediction system will be a bit more hit and miss, but we could get it right as well. We could get it right, you know, at the start and you go, wow, Mark mm. and Tracy, they're just like a member of the family. They know me so well. And then over time, you'd realize, no, there's a lot of misses that they're, <laughs> that they're making here. Well, but maybe I mean, that we're, what we're understanding is what your intention is with, with the particular vocabulary because of the way that you say something and your intonation and your body language, we might go, oh, I know what you mean. I don't like the word is not the same, you know, it's maybe not the word I'd use, but I know exactly what you're trying to say by that. So, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. So that's, I guess I think of those types of interactions in that positive context, right? When you're engaged with someone and, oh, I caught you, I caught you. So I named, just so you know, my show is music themed. Like I always title it uh, with a lyric because I love music. So if I can get you guys down to Dallas and like my favorite band at the same time, like that would be my ultimate dream, right? Like if I can get Radiohead out if and you guys. We get, if we get down to Dallas then, which we will do, let's, let's, yeah. let's head down when to Dallas. Yeah, when we get down to when Dallas. When we get down to yeah. Dallas and we sort out being with your favorite band, what is the band that we're on with? Radiohead or Depeche Mode? Oh, oh good amazing. call. Oh, I love that. I, I will be okay with either. Yeah. No, can I, just tell you, you, I, be al better. I almost titled uh, the, today's episode Lie to Me, but I was like, I don't think I want that song in my head while I'm talking to you. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let me do a different song. But um, so Tell Me Lies, it's a Fleetwood Mac song. So we yeah. can, you know, go with that. That's a more positive -y song, I guess. Not really. But, uh, but, Look, we don't necessarily intend to lie all the time. Sometimes our body language will show maybe our disdain on things, but when we're trying to be nice and polite around people, right? And who hasn't watched your TED Talk, Mark? I mean, I've watched it like a thousand times and I still chuckle every time because I think I screw it up. Okay, can I let's can I shift a little bit to your TEDx talk real quick? Because yeah, I need you right. to help me because I think I'm screwing it up with people. And they're like, I don't think you're selling this guy well. And I'm like, no, I'm telling you the truth. He's awesome. So here's what here's where I think I'm screwing up. You titled it, you know, being inauthentic. Yeah, the importance right? of being inauthentic. Right. And then here on the world of LinkedIn and business based, you know, digital media content that people talk about and creating their authentic self and being yeah, yeah. who you are. And I say, and I agree with you, which is look, you want to put on a good face, but do you really want to share every single thing that's authentic to you and going on in your life? And I made a joke and I said, yeah, I have warts on my toes. Let me share with you how painful that is. And oh, by the way, do you want to uh, work with me on my consulting service? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'm not articulating well, but can you just kind of give me just a quick summary of being inauthentic is actually better suited for, you know, business type of engagement. I don't know. Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> no, I think you, well, you're saying it, you, you are saying it right. Um, and I think you, you give a really good example there, which is when you talk about the warts on your toes, which is absolutely factual. You know, <laughs> very authentic. Very yeah. authentic. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not that helpful for people getting on with you in the, in the thin slice of life that they need to get on with you mm. in. But you're right. It is it is authentic. So, so what I'm saying is, and, and what I'm saying is, is shifted a little bit from that, which is if you are truly authentic, you will hang around people who are simply an echo of you. They are simply a reflection, a reverberation of yourself. You will, you will be standing in a mirror all the time. And that means you'll be super comfortable and you'll feel really authentic and you'll feel really satisfied because you're designed, that's how you're designed, uh, to just get along at the least cost possible with the least pain possible. But if you're inauthentic, 
you will start to make an effort to hang out with people who make you uncomfortable sometimes. And they push your boundaries and they push your limits. And you might find out that you're somebody more extraordinary, interesting, capable than you are right now. Let me give you one last thought about this, because I was just on another call recently with somebody actually from, from Zoom who heads up um, uh, heads up um, events at, at, um, at Zoom. And I was saying, look, you, you know, the human body and human mind are designed to just stay alive at the minimal possible cost. So, you know, you're there, you're working hard, you're doing all your thing, and you're going, ah, I work hard, I work hard, and, and look what I'm achieving. It's like, no, you're just doing the absolute minimum. And you look at all these other people and you go, well, they're achieving so much and they're doing so much. It's like, no, they're just staying alive. It's just they're staying alive is just a bigger capacity to you. And I remember this when, when we had our first kid, Lex, and, and I think certainly I thought, you know, I was working really hard and doing lots of stuff and getting stuff going. And then you have a kid and then your capacity has to change gear. And I suddenly realized, oh, no, I'm just super lazy. Like, look at all the extra capacity that I had. And if I'd have used that capacity that you need when you've got your first kid, yeah, and I'd have done that, used that energy for 20 years, where would I be now? I was only doing the the minimum. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just, uh, sorry, just with that example. Yeah, for sure. The first kid and then the second, and, and I'm sure p people that have kids and, I mean, it just, it does drive you into some like over capacity, overdrive of like uh, achievement because you have to, to keep the other person alive as well. So you're not just for your own survival or the survival of your unit as a partner. It's like this other in thing, this other entity. I remember some, some, you know, just like, and then, then every kid you have, it's like having another human being to keep alive. It's a lot, you know, it's a lot. And you do just, you, you, I mean, people do it. But then I guess, you know, people do what they have to do in, in no matter what their circumstances. Like before I had kids, I felt like I was busy beyond busy all the time. It's just a, you know, you shift to a different type of busy that becomes much more for me as well about surviving and, and making sure small person, you know, survives, doesn't fall on their head off the couch only once. It only happened <laughs> once. You know, I think, that, I think it has no. to happen. I think it has to, it's a requisite. I think you have to fall on your head once. Like I'll never we all have. It. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. He still or, has the star. He's, he, oh, actually, sorry, sorry, it's twice that. Oh, it's <laughs> sorry, twice. Star, you know, or, or in my, uh, my niece's case was several times. I, like my dad, like I probably shouldn't have. Well, my sister had a uh, daughter. And so when my sister was at work or something, my dad would watch my niece and uh, he'd leave her in the carrier, you know, when she was little. <laughs> and uh, don't, look, grandpa's grandpa, right? But I, bet, I guess he put on a tabletop, like not even on like the. Like a, like a dining room table. And I guess she just fell over. <laughs> like, and, I, and, I just, and then I'll just hear my dad go, oops. And I'm like, <laughs> so we, we called my niece Sparta for like, like, a, like pretty much till now. And she's 30 now. So, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, well, okay. So, so let, let's talk about this because you, you said something and I did an instantaneous response and then it made me instantaneously think of another video I'd watched of you guys. Okay. So it's your, um, your truth and lies myth busting series. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a chair. Okay. And I know it's a whole baseline thing. Yes. Read the baseline. I know it's all about the differences <laughs> and all that stuff. I've been trained. I'm it's easier said than done, but okay. I'm, I have a chair that has padded um, arm thingy, whatever these things are called. Again, yeah. Mark thingies, Yeah. arm thingies. Armrests. And armrests. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I will often, although I'm sitting on pillow today, but I'll often like rest on it because I don't want to hit my microphone and yeah, I don't want right. to put it on the hand or the table because I've got a hollow table. So, I mean, if I move around, you can hear it. Right. So I find myself kind of like doing this a lot, doing this a lot. And guess who made a video about steepling? Does it make you look smarter? Does it make you look smart <laughs> now? Okay. So I'm sitting back and I just did that too. When I was listening to you guys, and I went like this and I kind of like did this a little bit long. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, okay. There's so much with context. So in context, I was responding to something that made me think, and I just went, Ooh, I want to yeah. think about it. But then I held it 
And then I realized I was holding it and I was like, son of a sea cook, put my hand out. So help me understand this you guys, because I fidget too. And that's another video. Thank you. Get out of my head. But like, yeah, why is, why is that? Why does that happen? Because is it because my arms are here on the armrest that like, I have nothing better to do with my hands? Like what? Well, first, so first of all, the first point is that I said something and you had a realization. Yes. And you demonstrated that by bringing one side of your brain to the other side of your brain in a definite thought here, down what we call the wheel plane. So it's like the creative side of your head and the cognitive side of your head suddenly went, wow, we've just connected in the center. Yeah. That doesn't happen often. Okay, good. Doesn't happen often. <laughs> so that was a a a moment of realization that mm. not only happened in your mind, but you shut you you displayed that unconsciously. Okay. Yeah. And then and then I sat with you a bit, and then you went, "Hang on, I'm in front of some people who look at body language for a <laughs> living. Uh, what's this saying?" And so you became self conscious. You became conscious of yourself and you went what what is what am i suggesting by this and you then went oh, okay let me just see whether i can hide <laughs> slink um, away somewhere. but what <laughs> you were doing now. there isn't wasn't steepling okay okay i wouldn't say that's that's true because we saw where it came from you went whoa hang on that suddenly something has made sense mm. to me yeah Steepling is when you get the digits and you put them together like this, which is actually quite complicated to do for the brain. That takes a lot of brain capacity. And then you clearly display that to people to go look at how functional my neocortex wow. is. You can even do you can even do this. You look like an, a, an a, like an evil, an uh, evil. <laughs> Mr. Hearns. The universal <laughs> signal of I'm an evil person. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm an evil genius. That's it. Yeah. You know, look at how my mind has the capacity to do this at the same time as talking or thinking other stuff. It causes other people's brains to go, what's going on there? What's going on there? Yeah. But uh. it isn't likable by any stretch of the mm. imagination. Okay. Okay. Now, thank you for that. <laughs> so I fidget. I'm a fidgeter. I gesticulate a lot. So I'm curious on this because I've gotten feedback. I've done, I've done 20 years in corporate tech sales, okay, and um, in different capacities, different types of roles within sales. Um, and I've gotten feedback over the years. You know, I'm an out extrovert. I'm outgoing. I feed off the energy of the room. If I feel like I'm in a hostile meeting, I do, I, despite popular opinion, I do calm down a little bit more and I become more thoughtful and listen and figure out what the problem is. But if I'm in a friendly room, my hands are all over the place and I'm like, woohoo, you know, let's have a party. So I've been given feedback of like, Hey, you need to like curtail that a little bit more. But yet now that I'm out of the tech sales world, all those clients that I was able to just do this and you know, whatever, they're still my friends. We're still connected. They're still referring me to business. So I guess this kind of feedback that you get and criticism, how would you address that? Do you agree, disagree? Maybe. Um, well, just when you, sorry, when you're gesturing now, I think what's interesting is all your gestures are totally, they're symmetrical generally when you're doing them, just when you're talking, unless you think about them and you start doing a, sorry, I'm not quite there, like asymmetrical <laughs> things. So the thing is when they're symmetrical, I feel very, I feel, uh, at ease watching you. And what I see instead is your energy level going up. So a lot of the work that we do is about how to, how to just do easy body language that will be very specific. We'll say one thing will be clear. And I think the symmetrical gestures are, they're very clear. It's like you're down here, you're very centered. When you get up here, you get a little bit, sorry, get my other hand in. There we go. There. <laughs> you you're more passionate. You're more excited about it. I can imagine if you got more feedback, it's maybe because it started getting, it, are she excited? It's, mm -hmm. it's what it like that, that gets quite confusing. And Mark can tell you more about why that's confusing a little bit for your brain. Cause if you're doing asymmetrical gestures on different sides, it, it tells a different story, but if you're doing symmetrical gestures, it's, 
it's just showing that you're, and you are super energetic and you get excited and passionate about stuff. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting from your symmetrical higher gestures, but you can talk about the asymmetrical. Yeah. Life. So, so nature favors symmetry rather than asymmetry as a whole. Okay. Uh, you think about butterflies mating. If the butterflies are symmetrical, it's so much easier when they are at angles to each other, if they're totally symmetrical in terms of their patination, to be able to tell, am I, am I the same variety of butterfly as that one over there? Even at different angles with symmetry, it's way easier. If the butterfly has asymmetrical patterns on it, the other butterfly's brain is going, well, oh, hang on, well, what, what variety is that? And it'll go off and seek another butterfly. So we, so nature favors symmetry because it is easier for cognition. Mm -hmm. So me being symmetrical is easier for your brain than me being asymmetrical. And if I start to change the asymmetry, this really upsets you, okay? So, so you want to veer towards symmetry rather than asymmetry because it's a, a, a lesser neural load. Now, to back to the idea of people telling you, hey, you know, calm down those gestures. One of the most consistent thing I get from clients, and I had it just yesterday, in fact, is, is people say, but I was taught you know, either when I was at school or when I was with my leaders or with people who just felt they knew something about this and should advise me on this, like, don't gesture. It is distracting or it's yes. not good. OK, asymmetrical gesturing is distracting. Symmetrical gesturing is not distracting. And we favor people who we can see their hands um, we favor people when we can see their hands rather than people when we can't see their hands. And, and being told, don't use your hands and don't gesture, goes right back, tends to come from your schooling or the schooling of the person who is advising you for whatever reason they feel they're able to give you advice. In that schooling being... Um, general to many of the population is a relatively new thing in human beings okay yeah. that that you and i we both went to school for a long long time and it was universal to us and like that's pretty new okay, okay. and how did we know who our leaders were well our leaders were either stronger or more intelligent or both mm -hmm. okay now when you start to universally educate people you will get more smarter people just as a general rule. But here's the thing, you don't want to educate everybody to be a leader. There's not enough leadership positions in the world. Now, what do leaders do when they're communicating? They show you their gestures and they'll show them in symmetry. So the moment, the moment you start to gesture at school, yeah, certainly in symmetry and a lot, that's the time to shut you down because are you at a school for leaders or are you at a school for followers and workers? If you're at a school for followers and workers, mm. shut you down. In fact, there are many schools out there traditionally that would say, you know what, when you're talking, put your hands behind your back. Mm -hmm. Not because that's the right thing to do as a leader. That's the right thing to do to shut down your cognitive skill. It'll shut you down as a, as a leader. So I will go, for example, to, to many areas that were under uh, British schooling rules, you know, that were pink on the, on the empire map. And they will say, but our, our, our teachers told us, you know, to, to stand with our hands down by our sides and, yeah. and look down when we're presenting. It's like, yes because they were telling you how to be submissive. Mm. They didn't want you to be the leader. They wanted you to be submissive. You've been taught how to communicate in the most submissive way. I'm going to tell you how to communicate, how leaders communicate. I hope that makes sense. No, that absolutely does make sense. And they're probably watching and it'll be funny. Yeah, thanks for that advice. I'm keen on that. Yeah, thanks for that <laughs> advice. Thanks for your showing me how to be submissive. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I was in tech sales and I was female, so I'll just leave that comment hanging well, for that's a little exactly bit. It, yeah. Isn't it? That's exactly it. The I, moment yeah. they see you looking like a leader and looking like you could sell is the moment to shut you down. 
Okay, so while you were talking to me, I have to ask you this. I felt the compulsion to lean for. I'm leaning in now. I'm trying not to because I'm trying to be respectful of the mic, but mm -hmm. and I don't want to do that NPR <laughs> voice that you made fun of earlier. <laughs> don't think I don't obsess over your videos, you peoples. Right. Um, right. <laughs> but I did. I tried to do volume control. No, but I did lean forward and I kind of went like this. So when I, I wanted to do this, but I caught myself and I was like, no, I'm going to sit back. I'm just going to do nothing for a second. But my head wanted to do this. So if I were in a meeting, right, and I'm looking at a client and they're doing this, my assumption would be that I'm triggering something that they want to learn more or they're leaning in more to hear it. But mm. there's a blocker here, though, it's the hand. So am I reading it wrong? Or, I mean, what what is that gesture where people, hmm, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. So, look, I, I would be looking at their baseline. Like, did they come in like like that because if if they've been doing that for the whole meeting it's just it's just what they do well but also i think if you've been sitting in a meeting for a while and and i don't know if you talked about this in the ted talk the idea that after a while your your head does get heavy we're holding our heads up here <laughs> and there's a desk you know it's saying there's a desk right here and i am really interested in what you're saying and maybe i'm wanting to sh shut down some other aspects of me having to like hold myself up and not succumb to gravity to my authentic self which would have me lying on the floor if i could <laughs> <laughs> so with a mug in hand yeah exactly <laughs> yes drinking like yeah um so but, so i am focusing in so there's a feeling of i'm focusing in because i'm leaning so i'm not having to think about the i'm not having to use as many muscles to hold my head up and I can focus in, you know, it's, int and, and I mean, you might have something else to say about it, but I think it's interesting because it reminds me also of the idea of when you, when you cross your arms in meetings, if you're thinking sometimes, you know, and we talk about this in the Mythbusters and sometimes you're just shutting down, you're, you're closing off other stimuli because you're trying to think about something or, or, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean necessarily all the things that people say it means like you're, you know, you're closed off, but you are closing something off not necessarily the person you're talking to. You might be really focusing in, going, I really want to think and not have to worry about holding my arms up about yeah. what you're saying. So it's really comfortable, actually. I like sitting like this. It's quite comfortable because then I can really, my brain has more energy to focus on what you're saying. Do you know what I mean? No, it is. And, and I want to lean forward. Doing that, yeah. um, I think, is different from doing that or like, that the remark is like passing you know, out here and I'm going kidding. off yeah. your face you're, you're going look i'm showing you my face i'm not disclosing i'm not trying to hide mm, that's know. true i'm i'm keeping it there just so i can rest a bit and think more about what you're saying anyway that's my that would be my take yeah look there's a big difference between you know i've got a desk here um you know my eyesight means that if i lean in i can see you better so so that you guys can better. lean back it's okay lean back lean back it's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. because now I'm like, really big, I'm, yeah. I'm, i feel a bit detached this is more comfortable now i've taken you know my head weighs about 12 pounds so that's like that's now i've now got it on a stick which means it's working against gravity you can see you know whether i'm smiling or frowning or whatever it, there's a big difference between this and like that oh yeah <laughs> uh, yeah or yeah. like or like, hold on, like, I don't want to mess my hair up, of course, but like this, like sitting, talking to somebody like this, which just means you've blown, my head is blown up by what you're, like, I've got to really like get in there and think about what, right? It's not that, it's not going, I'm exhausted and you've like blown my brain out. It's going, I really am listening and I'm thinking and I want you to see my expression and I'm just doing that so I can focus my, that's what, that's what I would get out of that yeah. and focusing a little bit more on you. So, so, okay, now I've got two people I'm talking to and I find myself again, and I love this is mirroring, mirroring. Oh my gosh. I can't speak English. Mirroring, mirroring, mirroring. We know what you're saying. We, we know. know what you're we got saying. I can't, I can't say that other word where you make beer. I can't say that word either. Brewery. 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 Anyway. Brewery. Brewery. And I was born in the United <laughs> States, guys. Okay. So I don't know why I can't do my R's. Yeah, Thanks mom and dad. Too, which is take some of the, the, the letters out of it and just run it in. So instead of going brewery, just go brewery. This is not helping, is it? I know. <laughs> I, know. I was like, uh. so yeah. Look, 
Mark, I appreciate you trying to help, but it hasn't worked for 40 plus years, <laughs> yeah. people. I'm just saying. I'm, like, I'm no. like the version of me that I hate that, that, <laughs> that, that, that tries to help me with remembering people's names and left and right. No, no. But, okay, so here. Here's the thing. is Okay, so let's talk about mirror. mirror okay, that thing, yeah, right? The it. reflective Singing. thing. Yes, yeah. go on. Yeah. Um, does, okay, it, it can be done subconsciously, right? Where you're engaged in conversation and you're like, Absolutely. you're just kind of like, did the, the, could you be mirroring someone in a hostile context? I Meaning, like, if you guys are in an argument, you guys are also matching each other. Like, is it doesn't matter what the emotion is. It's just you're just matching whatever it is. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So first of all, uh, we mirror subconsciously anyway. It's it's one of the primary ways that we get theory of mind. So when people talk about empathy, yeah, what they're talking about is theory of mind. How do I think somebody is thinking and feeling right now? And one of our primary methodologies as, as human beings, uh, in fact, many social mammals, to get that is to mirror what the other is doing in order to, for it then to affect us and go, oh, um, I'm copying their body. I'm now feeling like this they must be feeling like that. Well, that's either true or false or something in between, mm -hmm. but it's our best, quickest guess. We can mirror externally, which is we actually start copying the body externally. And sometimes we'll just mirror internally. We won't copy the body, but in our mind's eye, we will, we will copy it in order to get the feeling there and then. So for your example, in a, in a situation of conflict, Yes, there is a strong, strong chance if somebody is being aggressive that we will first of all mirror that aggression in order to work out if they're aggressive or not and or any other feelings involved. Now, there's a risk to that because they're going to mirror us and then we'll mirror them more. And so we spiral mm. towards a feeling together and that's called empathy. And empathy is as dangerous as it is good. Mm -hmm. Because you don't just mirror in empathy. You don't just mirror the good feelings. You mirror the negative ones and everything else in between. You mirror right. everything in empathy. If you're truly empathetic, listen, if you're truly empathetic, you will mirror some of the most horrible things on the planet. You just, But you'll feel, it will feel right. Right. To you. Okay? Right. So, so, so one of the things that, that we teach people is, Number one, cognitive empathy, which is which is doing it just cognitively rather than emotionally and purposely not mirroring people. Purposely, in some situations, giving purposely different behaviors or other behaviors in order not to fall into the trap of, of spiraled mirror, mirroring. Could we create something like that for social media? <laughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So I, I asked to have this conversation with you because I want to talk about your personal lives and we just went down a different rabbit hole altogether. So um, you guys got lucky, but I have to ask you guys as a couple, as a knowledgeable couple on body language and human behavior, I mean, have you guys had amazing rows or do you guys really just like chill out, calm down and kind of, because of your training, you're able to like, you know, be calmer in your disagreements or do you guys disagree at all so i like how he looks at me mark knows his place you know what i think is interesting i think that both of us have an ability to do what he just said which is to de-escalate a situation okay. so whether it be about work or personal or whatever i do think like you know it's funny because what was playing in my mind the whole time Mark was talking, was watching people, because as I say, we can see the street outside. And yeah. there's some traffic, There's there's been some, you know, there's often like confrontation, crazy drivers, and they get out of their cars and they have confrontations. And it's interesting to watch the body language when you can't hear them out the, out the window yeah. and you see the posturing and you see the neck. So typically what happens is the head sticks out, the neck sticks out, and they're from the side, they look like, that they're like in this weird like ready to go you know they're ready to go they're ready they're in fight position like chest stuck out neck stuck out right okay yeah um what i find that that potentially we benefit from 
whether it's through training or through talking about this or writing about it, is trying to take our own advice of going, <laughs> take a breath, just stop for a minute and just think about what's going on here and just try to de-escalate because escalation in my experience doesn't ever solve the problem. No. Escalation causes you to get a whole bunch of stress that might in fact usually make the problem worse. And I find if people can de-escalate and think for a moment, number one, your brain has a better chance to work as it's suppo hopefully supposed to work, uh, you know, to go just my, that the, my, my cave person who wants to like, you know, attack something is going to calm down and my brain's going to function and go, what's actually going on here? And what's the best way we can solve this? Let's be a little more constructive around this. So, so whether that's training or whether that's experience, I don't know, but that's what I believe that we both benefit from. I gotcha. Okay. So on that note, what about the parenting aspect of it? How are your children responding to you guys knowing darn well? You're like, oh yeah, really? You're going to, you were out at Billy's uh, this evening. Okay. You know, like, how do you guys like, uh, do, does it drive your children crazy? Cause. No, I, I don't mean, think so. Because we don't, we don't, to my mind, we're not trying to, cause them to be in a situation where they can't get away with mm. being not quite accurate or dishonest with us because that's okay. something you have to be able to do socially this this, this idea of um so there is an idea out there of like you know lying is bad don't lie don't be dishonest well that's mm -hmm. that's a that's a perfect north star that's a that's a a an ideal and there are some people out there who do do talk to that ideal and they go you know always tell the truth or just you know at least try not to be dishonest i think is the caveat to that and 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 you know i'm i'm, I'm thinking about one person in in particular who does put forward that idea um uh, and he puts it to forward in a very strong way but many people don't like him because he's he's super difficult to be around. Uh, yeah. Because he will be um exceptionally honest with with everybody. And and actually honesty takes a long, long time. So when you're listening to him talk, it takes a long time for him to get his most honest, accurate thought across. And then by the end of it, it's like, and I don't really like it very much for some mm -hmm. people. And so is he get honorable with not potentially not particularly and can he get a point across quickly to get things going no not at all is he is he you know vehemently accurate yes ab absolutely mm. you suggest yes he's being absolutely honest and truthful with you well by the same tone you don't want to to create an environment for your kids where they become through their their suffering of being forced into abject honesty all the time, they become antisocial. Anyway, I hope that makes that that, that which makes I sense. think, yeah, which I yeah, you know, it's interesting. Sorry, I, and I'm I'm sitting here trying to remember instances where you know they're they're teens now, but when they were kind of growing up a little bit younger, and and it is really important not to teach them to lie, of course, <laughs> but, but sometimes better? okay, it's not. You know, it, so you're giving them some advice. They're like, yes, but that's not entirely the truth. <laughs> and it's very difficult. Like, it's difficult, actually. We've had to go through that process of going, I know, but it's, but there's a portion of truth there. What's honest about it? What's the honesty that you are expressing? Mm -hmm. And, and what's, what, what, like, if you say exactly what your truth is right at that moment, I don't think it's going to benefit anybody. It's not going to benefit you. It's not going to benefit the people you're talking to. And so it's, and it's not so much about lying or bending the truth. It's just about being so, I think it's about being social. I think you put your mm. finger on it. It's about being social and not being antisocial. Mm. No, I think that's, oh, I mean, we could definitely keep going on this and like we are running long on time and I knew this oh, would yeah. happen. I want to be respectful for your time, you guys. And I really, I enjoy you on this, but Okay. So this is, this is going to be the one question that might be slightly personal. And I could tell 
you dodged the question on this morning show that you posted on your uh, uh, on one of your playlists, uh, Mark. It was 2018. It was a morning show, and uh, the segment was body language for dating. Oh, yeah. And I I wrote this in capital letters. They dodged the how you guys met question. So <laughs> did we? You didn't know. answer it. You guys didn't answer. So how did you guys meet? Like, did, were you guys in class together or something? Like, how how did that happen? Without going into too much detail, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, we met. I moved to England, and uh, and talk about you know being out of a comfort zone. Um, I was I was I was I I really pushed the boundaries. You know, I so I was thinking about that earlier. I when you move countries, that's a really good example of 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 you you are yourself, but you have to find different aspects of yourself. Um, and, and it's a constant test and a constant test on your boundaries, but I'd been there for some time. Okay. Uh, I went to drama school there and, uh, yeah. And I met Mark. He was, uh, guest directing at the drama school that I went to for a month. He was the guest director and there were, it was a postgraduate acting course, in musical theater. And, uh, yeah, he came in all cool. As was he is. A musical theater. What was I doing on a musical theater? That's what we. It was a. It was a great topic of conversation amongst the theater. students. Was doing what's he doing really here? Musical theater. I wouldn't have ever signed up for that if it had been a musical. Are theater. you sure about that? Uh, and secondly, does that mean you you both sing? No, that's the point. Neither of us. Neither <laughs> of us <laughs> <laughs> oh darn it! Because I was going to say musical theater. Well, there were the there were the people that were good at the musical theater bit. And then there were kind of the straight actors. And I was I was more of a straight actor. Okay. Um, and yeah. And uh, so, yeah, Mark came in and directed us in a devised piece. That what was, does that mean, devised piece? It means we were make, I was making it up. We were just ma <laughs> making it up. Making up little sketches yeah, yeah. around a theme. How fun is um, that? Oh, that's cute. Well, I yeah. guess, wait, does that make it? A conflict if you're a director and you're a student at the, was there like rules around that or no, it's graduate well, school so we're all adults absolutely there were rules and in fact oh, nothing, oh. we met that's not, how not that we met anybody ever showed me the rules and that was you know back in the <laughs> but day nothing... when, when when you know there maybe were rules but nobody made you any sign anything towards towards gotcha the nothing well okay happened until after the, until after his engagement with the school Okay. But that is technically how we met. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, 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 yeah. gotcha. That, yes, okay, that's I was okay. Very, very cognizant of the of the power differential. Well, okay. Speaking of power differential, then um I've seen this video of you, Mark. It, was it a spoof or was it like was a commercial of you running? Yes. <laughs> okay, was this before you guys met or after you met? <laughs> Oh, oh no, that was after. That I think we were married that. at that point. So, so yeah. what, what was that? Like, I see clips. I'm like, is that a real commercial, or did someone like like Photoshop your head into it? Like, no, that was, that, was that you? Commercial. Nike commercial uh, for the Super Bowl in year I can't remember. Yeah, it was a long time ago. A long time ago now. Gosh, that must have been like 2001 or two or something. That is it was a long time ago. Mm. So how yeah, we... get, how do you get that gig? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I was known for physical performance, and so I was one of the people who they were thinking of to do it, and they asked me to do it. That is hilarious. Okay, and I'm not going to specify exactly what it is. For those that are interested, you can Google it yourself, um, because I want to leave everyone a more positive, funnier note, which is if you want to be more effective and you want to have better ability to communicate, and if I may quote, because I always screwed it up, I was trying to say it last night and I just kept stumbling, but if you want to stand out, win trust and gain credibility you really ought to look at truth plane mark bowden tracy thompson you guys have been so gracious with me thank you so much for today and thanks for let me pray you know just dig in a little bit because i i do find couple relationship uh interactions interesting anyway but the fact you two are doing what you do i was uh i don't know how you guys do it so kudos to you well we manage <laughs> <laughs> Tracy's like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything now. <laughs> no, you guys absolutely loved having you. Um, any final thoughts on uh, truth? Oh, I'm so, I'm so silly. I need to do this real quick because I want to make sure I promote this for you guys. So, oh, yeah. let let us please. You guys need to check yeah, out truth and lies. What people you. are really thinking? Okay, can I? 
I just I need to tell you guys, I have a bone to pick with you guys. Whoever yeah. your publisher is needs to publish more because I um, when I finally got you guys you know scheduled and booked, I was like, oh, OK, you know, I'll buy their book. We can read it and we'll talk about certain things out of that's great. And then I couldn't get the book. And I'm like a hardcore, like old school. I need to smell the book person. Yeah. So it's taken weeks for delivery. And oh, so no. it didn't arrive in time for our conversation. So then I went and looked online. And so I was like, oh, I can't get do a Kindle. But I hate that format because it bothers my eyes. So I went with the audio. And then before I knew it, I ran out of time. So full disclosure, I still have to read your guys' book. <laughs> well, th that is just another story to add to the list of stories that as an author, you just wonder, how does publishing work or survive? Yeah. It's just you, another one of those things like, well, of course you couldn't get the book. Of course you couldn't mm -hmm. because it's publishing. Yeah. Nobody knows how it works, least of all the actual people publishing. Hey, <laughs> for you, <laughs> congratulations <laughs> that you guys have a, a, a wait list, if you will. So, I mean, yeah. it's, fascinating i I was bummed out because i really wanted to hold it for you guys so um we'll oh we up. have yeah we'll hold we up, have buddy. our coffee there, there. oh there we go see oh <laughs> well on that note though too though so everyone please check out truth plane go check out mark bowden um on youtube and um, tracy's on there as well i i love your guys' series of videos it's very helpful it's very quick and shout out to the behavior panel that's how i discovered you guys Woohoo! I keep talking. I'm baselining you, which is funny <laughs> because, okay, oh my god, I can keep asking questions all day long. One last one. I swear to God, we're done. Is that cool? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay, okay. I'm baselining you. Okay. Yeah. Can I just tell you? I'm like, if I wanted to like try to read your guys' body language right now, I'd be like this, and I wouldn't understand a word you're blooming saying to me because all I'm doing yeah. is staring at you. Like, yeah. what is the advice you guys give? Because you guys see micro like movements and stuff mm. how do you integrate the voices with your eyeballs like how does is it practice like is there a technique what do you suggest because me baselining literally looks like this <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you can't do that in meetings you can't do that in conversation so you can't you, you can't. can do it if you're watching recordings but yeah i i think just back to what we were saying before for the idea of uh, like, I think you see bigger gestures on a, on a, I mean, you know, Mark talked more to this, but I think you see clear big gestures on a, on a kind of, um, you know, primal level you mm -hmm. respond to. So, so I think, um, yeah, like, and then you start getting an idea of how people are over time with these bigger <laughs> symmetrical gestures. gestures. <laughs> so, so that's, I think that's, that is, that's probably the, like to be clear and simple. And, you know, that's, that is a, and, and that's what we kind of would watch out for because yeah, it's really difficult if you're sitting in a meeting trying to baseline somebody without looking crazy, without like going, what are they doing? And, you know, but, but it's, if you see them over time, you, you know, and you have some you time either in a recording or you've been in a number of meetings with them, you'll get an idea of how they are generally. I mean, but maybe you want to add to that. Yeah. I mean, I would just say um, there is so much that you could look at and that's mm. what you're experiencing is you're just going, yeah. there is so, there's much, so much. Yeah. 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 And, so, and so good. You're, you're absolutely right. But what for you is most important or what do you want to concentrate on for this particular baseline in this particular situation? So I might walk into a meeting and, I, and everybody might sit down and I might go, well, OK, so I can't see anybody from, you know, from waist down. So I'm not going to baseline any of that for a start. <laughs> OK, so that's gone. So that's gone. And then I'm going to go, OK, and actually I'm the person presenting. So now I've got a cognitive overload in that. So what am I able to see? Like, what am I going to be able to focus on? And for me, I might go, I might. And again, this might be very, very different from other people, because I tend to think about body language often in a radically different way than most other people are. I might go, I'm going to look for the space between people and baseline that. 
because I'm not going to be able to see their faces. I'm not going to be able to see their gestures, but I will be able to see the gap between people and as i'm talking to 12 people in a room i'm going to start looking at the gap between people and if i see radical changes in that if it is notable for me i'm now going to hone in on that and go what's now happening here and hone in on detail mm -hmm. around, around that but otherwise i'm not going to look for anything else because i got a job to do i've right. got one thing, I've got a goal that I'm trying to get, and I want to monitor the situation by getting a baseline on it. So, so it's like, you know, what can, I, what can I look at that my brain can deal with at the same time as doing the job that it's meant to be doing? Ooh, that yeah. is, you know, I really wish we had met, and I really wish you'd get your guys' like show earlier when I was actually in my corporate life, because everything you're saying, like I can... Like it's just making me trigger all these memories of how I could have done things differently uh, over my career. So, but this is so helpful, and I hope I hope everyone that's watching is going to pick up these cues and not make the mistakes I did. Or hindsight's twenty twenty. Don't be so hard on yourself, Sia. You're awesome. Well, yeah. and you didn't we see me in those me meetings. You didn't see me in those meetings because uh, <laughs> actually, if you ever see a recording where I'm in a hostel, like like a recording, like. You know something's wrong when I'm just like, and or, or I do this, <laughs> and it's hilarious. How many people don't pick up on it? Yeah. Like I think I'm freaking obvious. Like I feel like I'm the what's that? What's his name? Jim Varney. I um, you know, he was a very demonstrative face. If you remember him, the actor. Um, look him up. He's got like a lot of wrinkles all over his face, and he was just kind of okay. clownish in his like gesticulations and expressions. And I feel like I'm kind of like, or you say Jim Carrey. He's Canadian, right? Yeah, I, I'm kind of Jim Carrey like. I, you can tell I, I cannot play poker, <laughs> kind of thing. But anyway, so in, that, in that situation, Sia, what I the de the biggest de when you showed me that the biggest deviation from your baseline was your stillness. Yeah. So I don't even care what's going on in your face. I would be going, she's gone absolutely still. Something radical is going on here. I wouldn't even <laughs> bother with the with the face. So again, that's the thing of if I'm if I'm now baselining the group based on movement, I can see immediately when somebody goes very, very still. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what's happening on their face, because now I'm going to use questioning to go, hey, I'm just going to stop there. How are you thinking about this? And I'm going to direct a question to that person. And I'm going to then elicit valuable verbal data out of them based on that they've deviated from the thin slice of nonverbal baseline that I decided to use in that situation. Does that mean I do that in every situation? No. I might go into a group standing around with each other and all I'm going to baseline is their navel area and, and whether that's crunched in or opened up. I might baseline based on that. It it, it depends from situation mm. to situation. But but just to let you know, I'm making it really easy for myself. Mm. No, that's I, I love it. I, and I, I think that's what is very helpful because I think I'm, my eyeballs are going all over the place, right? And you're just kind of like looking for all sorts of stuff. It's almost, you're right, overload. And then becomes jumble of nothing, right? Yeah. So. Well, it just becomes, it just becomes, um, uh, painful for the brain and then here's what happens is you take that pain that your brain is feeling and you project that onto your subjects mm. so so you need to be in a space mm. where you're finding it actually quite easy not painful because otherwise you're pre projecting your the, the painful analysis that you're doing and you're going oh they're confused they're in pain they're worried they're upset. It's like, no, that's just you. In fact, so so for most people, when they're reading body language, all they're doing is looking in a mirror. That's all that's happening. Uh, yeah, that's all that's going on. When I when I read other people's analysis of stuff, basically, it is the best Rorschach test you can ever have because it's just like all they're doing is telling me what's going on in their mind when they when they sit. They've not really done an analysis. They've just done a projection. Okay, I can't tell you how many times I'm going to take notes and watch this and like, thank you so much. I, I And you know what's funny about this? Like, maybe, is it normal that my brain immediately jumps to immediate things that are going on in my life as we're talking? Is sure. it like, sure. does that mean? I hope so. 
<laughs> or, or is it because I've got like like ADD? I will jump around ideas all over the place. But but I, I can hear you and apply to a lot of things that are going on right now. And I almost feel like calling these people saying, I'm going to just give you this like two second segment. Here you go. Here, here you go. Do is it. it too obvious? Yeah. Do you think it'd be too obvious? Is it tactless to be like, here, you might need this? No, I just put before it, I, I, I heard this. It really helped me. Tell me what, go, go. Yeah. All you do is go, I, I, I really, I heard this thing and it really helped me. And I'd really like your opinion on it. Oh, I love that. Send it to that. I'd really like your opinion on it. Oh my gosh. No, well, okay. With my personal, they're, they're probably texting me back saying, screw you, dude. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Maybe they will. Maybe they will. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So Tracy, Mark, I swear to God, I know I could keep talking to you guys all day. And if you are in Dallas, would definitely we have to meet up. I, I mean, I'm getting you guys here. I'm going to get everyone to okay. learn all about we'll you guys. Yeah, yeah. So on that note, guys, I, thank you so much. I will go ahead in our notes, uh, add your contact information and all that good stuff for those that can reach you at truthplane.com. Okay. Is there anything immediate, any speaking engagements, Mark and Tracy, that I should be aware of to uh, promote it? We're going to go, um, oh, this is live. So um, at, you, know. Uh, you know what the be the best way to the people can you know help us out and and get more content is to link in. Link oh in yeah, us. link in with us. That's a great idea. Yeah. And and we will be posting more of those MythBuster videos, Sia. And do feel free if you link in with us to to let us know what you'd like us to address in the MythBusters because we haven't made them yet, and we'd be love to know what people have the biggest questions about. Oh, uh, and and we'll make some new ones soon, very soon. For sure, for sure. Because every single time you make those darn videos, I'm like, they're talking to me. They're talking to me. Like they need a. What are they doing here? Like get out, get out of my head. No, it's awesome. It's helpful. I'll, whenever we, uh, we catch up again, I definitely look forward to it. And I don't know how and why I'm not closing because I just don't want us to leave. But we're gonna have to <laughs> bring us back again. Sometime. Bring us back again. That's we'll come back. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, I would love to have you guys. And on that note, be safe, everyone. And I will see you next week for the mic is listening. See Thanks you guys. So and by the way, great to see you. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you guys. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.